see that shot, boy? You see that shot? That thing wet, yo. I taught Stephen Curry how to shoot. <laughs> but let's go, baby. Scoop, scoop, scoop. First day back in the gym, first day hooping. Well, actually, I've been in the gym, but that's my first time, like, actually, like, hooping and, like, shooting around, running around, shooting. In the past, I'd just, like, shoot, and I'd walk, and, and my knee would still be hurting and stuff. But my knee is getting better. Why? Because it was never truly healed, uh, injured in the first place. It was just incredibly weak to the point where... My, like my thigh muscles, they literally weren't even awake. They were asleep. Like they, they needed to be like awakened. They were just dead sitting there to the point where if I squat or I bend over or I'm walking around, whatever, all the, the pressure would be in my knees. Because if you don't have no muscles, well, something's got to hold you up. So then your knees and your joints and your tendons and whatever is doing all the work. But when you have those surrounding muscles strengthened, Dude, it feels so amazing. Like, this is my first time. I trained legs. I basically just shot around and got some cardio, got a good sweat in for like 30 minutes, 30, 40 minutes. Oh, she's bad. Dang it, I should have worked out an hour later. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. There was like no girls in the gym, but now this bad one just pulled up. But let me not get distracted because, dude, girls are actually the number one distraction in life. And on this journey, it just makes it so much easier to not get distracted because, um, oh, snap. What was I saying? <laughs> Dang, she's thick too. Anyways, anyways, 150 days of SEMA retention. Let's go, baby. Let's go. This is officially my second time making it to 150 days of SEMA retention. Uh, my first, like the long journey was last, last year. And it basically, it, it was like disastrous because that journey was all about being at the bottom, like being at rock bottom and overcoming it and learning the lessons that I needed to learn at rock bottom. Because in case you didn't know, I was in Hawaii, moved out to Hawaii, super rich, almost a millionaire. A month after I got to Hawaii, I lost like half a million dollars. And then it went back up and then it, it sort of was just fluctuating a couple hundred thousand here and there. But last year, 2023, it just, dude, I, long story short, like I literally had a couple thousand dollars to my name. So I moved to Hawaii with like 700, $800,000. I left Hawaii with like 2000. So it was an absolute disaster. And this was on sewer retention. So I'm just like, dude, I was like, all right, well, I'm on seamer attention, right? I've lost all my money. <laughs> like, I, I have, like, just, like, nothing to my name. I have my car. My car itself, would I, which I just got done paying off, like, it's a $20,000 car. I owned it since 27, 2016. I had just got done paying it off, and then the engine broke. Dude, what is some unknown numbers called me? Um, so, oh, that may have been the physical therapy. Oh, well, <laughs> I don't need physical therapy, even though I just paid health insurance $300. Dude, I hate this chat. Dude, I'm going to leave my phone on, like, do not disturb silence mode, like, permanently, dude. Did you just see how that phone call just distracted my whole entire train of thought? I don't even know what I was talking about now, bro. That pisses me off. But basically I was in Hawaii and I lost, oh yeah, the car, the car's engine went down. And I don't even know if these mechanics, cause mechanics are basically scammers. Like they're literal, like if you find a good trustworthy mechanic, that's one of the most valuable things ever. 99.9% .9 of, of mechanics are pure, straight up immoral scammers. But that's another reason you should DIY do it yourself. That's what I'm going to start doing. I've never been somebody to be like, oh, I'm just going to learn how to like fix the car by myself because the car is way too complex. And I feel like I don't want that responsibility. Like if I F up my own car, then what? 
deal, then you're even more screwed. Because then you're going to have to take it to somebody else anyway. So I just, I leave that to someone else. It's the same with like cleaning the house. My theory and my mindset has always been, why would I sit here cleaning the house like a woman when I could just hire a woman to do it for me? <laughs> That's why maids exist. Maids have existed since the beginning of time for a reason. Because kings aren't going around cleaning the house. Neither am I. That's just not a trait of mine. And it's not trying to be a trait of mine. I'm just gonna hire someone else to clean for me. And do my laundry and cook for me. And no, oh wait, that's a wife. <laughs> so if I have a wife, you know, that solves all that. That's why all these weird red pill dudes that are like being married is gay and being married is a beta cuck. Dude, they're the most alpha men ever are married with a family. To me, that's, that's way more alpha to be a very good father raising your children with a nice loyal wife and you'll have that romantic partnership together versus some 45 year old in the club trying to like hit on 20 year olds that's cringe and dorky to me so the real alpha man number one obviously is jesus christ he's the alpha omega <laughs> he's the alpha and omega the beginning and the end the first and the last the almighty all powerful he never relapsed on seamer attention once not even a single time he didn't even lust after a woman that's how strong jesus was so people people get it twisted when it comes to jesus they think he's some soft oh he let all those people beat him up or whatever when he comes back read some revelation and you're not gonna have that oh jesus is soft mindset anymore when he comes back he's coming back with a sword with fires out of the eyes on riding on the white horse dude the bible is epic dude because i've been seeing some little ai like because i'm a super visual learner so like the reason i haven't read a lot of the bible until like the last year where i've had this spiritual transformation on seamer attention is because i've just always hated reading i might be illiterate or something but you could also do audio, but I'm a visual learner. So when I'm seeing like a lot of these Bible stories come to life visually, like on YouTube, mini movies and stuff, I'm just like, whoa, dude, you realize how epic the Bible is. Dude, the Bible is more epic than all these Hollywood films put together. They all copy the Bible. If you really look at it, if you look at a lot of these stories, like I just saw this movie, Dune, Dune 2, is very epic but dude they literally just copy the bible the main character is the messiah and you have all these followers that are like is he the chosen one will he fulfill the prophecy blah 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 dude this all like the main storyline of like the main best story ever in life is the bible all these other fictional stories that hollywood makes i literally feel like they steal a lot of the premise from the Bible. You know, they have the main protagonist, the antagonist. It's the same way with the real life spiritual realm, with God and the devil. But yeah, I mean, seeing it, it's just like, dude, it's so epic. And yeah, but I'm on 150 days of super attention. I'm getting closer to God. Um, I've definitely had um, temptations on this journey. Like, dude, the fact that I'm sitting here right now saying I'm on 150 when two weeks ago, I was like certain I was gonna relapse. I was so horny because I was edgy. And just this past week, I haven't been edging and I already realized how much a difference it is. It's like, dude, when you're in the state of constant edging, the only thing on your mind is busting a nut. And the only thing on your mind, especially if you used to get laid in the past, is busting your nut with a woman. You don't wanna just bust it and waste it by yourself. You want a woman to make you bust. And so then you start seeking out that. And when you're seeking out that, you're in a heightened, elevated sense of horniness. So your standards go down 
your morality goes down. Everything that actually matters, you're just like, I, I'll worry about that later. I, I just, oh, I need a girl, man. That's because you're edging, dude. I was edging for like a week straight. And I was just like, I, I thought I was gonna relapse. I felt just pathetic. This past week, I stopped edging. Dude, I feel like a king again. I'm like, so it, it's like, do not edge on this journey. It will destroy your life. It will literally, like just think of how dangerous this sexual um, immorality is, this hookup culture, this, the. Uh, fresh and fit that dude just got exposed he impregnated a, a whore a hooker he impregnated a hooker now she could be lying because a lot of women lie so I'm not gonna jump to conclusions but regardless of if it's true or not even the fact that it, there's a risk of it being true it's like hello do not sleep around like dude there's so many risks we're sleeping around. I myself, dude, the amount of women I slept with when I was in the hookup culture in my early 20s, it's like I survived D-Day. I survived Beach Normandy <laughs> without getting a girl pregnant. That's how, like, you know those soldiers that ran out on the beach and they, were, they had no protection, no shelter, nothing. They just had to run up. They said, we got to advance. Is 90% of us are just going to sh get shot and dead, but the 10% that make it through... We make it happen, dude. My sex life, the fact that I made it through, dude, I'm that 10% that made it through Beach Normandy or whatever it's called on D-Day. The fact that I didn't get a woman pregnant. So I myself, I'm thankful to God, I guess it just wasn't meant to happen. And maybe I am um, a testimony to help other people, especially younger people who fall victim to that uh, peer pressure. That's what it is. That's the whole reason I started hooking up, was peer pressure. Everybody else, all the other guys were like, oh yeah, getting laid. If you don't get laid, bro, you're not cool. Like I was manipulated and brainwashed into thinking like my confidence was derived from hooking up with women. That's the dumbest, most corny, stupid, pathetic beta thing you could do. Oh, I'm obsessed over women. If you're not getting women, you're not successful. Bro, if you're not following God, you're not successful. That's the real truth. Look at this fresh loser. He just denied the faith. He just denied God in order to cater to this hookup culture garbage. He got a woman pregnant. He got a whore pregnant, which he tells you not to be with the, they say, oh, don't be with a whore, only sleep with them. It's the dumbest advice ever, because what do you do when you make a baby? You sleep with them, you retards. Dude, I would destroy Fresh and Fit in a debate. Destroy them. Even though I agree like 80%, that's the thing. Don't get it twisted. Myron, like he's, he's right on like 80%. He's dead wrong on 20%. And it's almost embarrassing and pathetic in the 20% that he's wrong on. But, this whole hookup culture, it, it's just embarrassing. The real masculinity, the real manhood, the real alpha males are men of God. That's just what it is. That's the truth. If you're obsessing over hooking up with women who won, will most likely make you a cuck because a lot of these women, like the whore that this dude just got pregnant, they're sleeping with multiple other men also. And a lot of these dudes will tell you, just keep that girl in the sex only category. <laughs> like, dude, oh my gosh, this generation is so lost, man. I was a victim too. I was like, I was like, ah, this girl, she doesn't deserve to be my girlfriend. So I'll, I'll just give her, I'll just give her the D. Bro, that's the dumbest thing ever. You should be preserving your D your energy you should be retaining for the right woman think about it that way you should be treating your sexuality the same way that like a pure woman should treat it a pure virgin woman she should not let anyone near her special parts except her husband the men for whatever reason you know they think with their dick and they don't have self-control 
they do the opposite. They're like, ah, just smash girls and don't let them like get close to you or whatever. Don't catch feelings or whatever. Dude, you should be preserving your, you shouldn't let these disgusting hookers get your D. That's, that's an L because what can happen? It's the biggest L ever. You impregnating one. Are you catching AIDS from one, etc.? There is no reason to be hooking up with short-term, one-night stand whores. None, zero, 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 zero. The red pill dudes, they're just objectively wrong on this issue. Men are better off not having sex with women before marriage. And obviously so are women. Women, it's affected even more. Like if you have a woman and she's been with like 30, 20, 50 dudes, that's a wrap, dude. She's damaged for good. The only, literally the only thing that could save her and transform her is Jesus. Because Jesus can transform and save anybody. But men can, like they can sleep with 20, 30 dudes and it doesn't really affect them as much. But women, it's like, it just damages them. But in reality, it does affect both. It, it just doesn't affect men as much. But men are very capable of being totally loyal to one girl just because they've had other girls. Whereas girls are like, once they go down that path, it's like, it's like they're damaged, dude. Because a woman's number one value is her purity. A man's number one value is not his purity. It's most likely his, his wealth, honestly. His wealth and strength. So a man's wealth and a man's strength, those are his top qualities. Like if you go back even way back then, before all this clout and technology and fame came into play, the two most significant attractive factors in a man was how strong he was and how much money slash power he had. Women, the number one value in a woman has always been her purity. Back then, it was it was like normal for women to be pure. Now, it's normal for women to be unpure. It's like almost impossible to find a pure woman in today's age. And like I said, men uh, sleeping around, it does not have as much as a pair bonding effect on us. Whereas women, it completely destroys them if they sleep around. So it, it's even more detrimental the fact that there's very little pure woman because that means there's very little good woman. And it, it's just obvious with how many single people there are today. And this is all obviously correlated with the decrease of God in society. The more you take out God in society, the more you make random immoral stuff your God. It's hedonistic. You chase your own pleasures instead of trying to honor God. When you honor God, the society is better and the relationship is better and the individual is better. Every single thing about reality is better when you chase God and follow God. So that's what I've realized and noticed more than ever on this journey, 150 days, every single temptation, it was that made me feel like guilty or shameful or weak or pathetic or or just lacking confidence or whatever it was all directly correlated with the devil sexual immorality destroying your temple being a slave to sin with being addicted to weed all this stuff dude every time i go against god it's like bad things happen when i honor god and go towards god it's just better. It's literally just better. And I'm not saying like, oh, you chase God and then you're gonna become a millionaire. I don't mean better in that sense. Because remember, the last time I was on this journey, I lost everything, literally everything. My car, my net worth, even the bathroom I was in was broken. So I had no toilet, no shower. I was dang near homeless pretty much. And I was on sewer attention. But guess what? I was still getting closer to God and I was strengthening my own wisdom and faith. Because when I was at my lowest, no one was there for me but God. 
and family, you know, but it's like this journey, this senior attention journey of 150 days, I feel like it's going to be a lot different because that chapter in my life, that was the journey of just rock bottom. This is the one where it's like, we're about to be up, but it's also going to be a test because guess what? God giveth and taketh away. So if I get rich again, which I, I, it's like almost certain with me being in the crypto market and there being a parabolic bull market, like right now, get in crypto if you're not. Um, I think it's, it's, it's like literally inevitable that I'm going to be rich. The question is, what am I going to do with the money? Am I going to go just be like, ah, like I don't, I don't need God anymore. Let me go bang these hookers and let me just go get all these girls again now that I got all the money. No. Because then guess what? You could lose all the money <laughs> anyway, again, because God is ultimately in control. He could take that right from you. I will be obedient and honor God with my money. I will help others and I will continue down the righteous path because that just feels better, dude. With or without the money, following God just feels better. Following your flesh and your sexual temptations, dude, that just makes you a weaker man. Do not not understand and just understand what I'm about to tell you. I just wasted $1,000 in medical bills entirely due to not following God because it's very obvious God has been telling me get sober I need you sober I can't have you who is a super strong warrior who has an amazing purpose on this life for the kingdom I can't have you being high all day he has made that obvious to me guess what I ignored his advice and then my legs because I was smoking instead of going out running I was smoking instead of working out properly I thought I was injured and then I got wasted all this stress. I was almost suicidal. You can check the video. It's called, I can't do this anymore. The whole video, I was genuinely suicidal, but it was because I thought I lost my knee forever. I thought I genuinely like tore my ACL and I would need surgery and I would forever be weaker. It was all in the head. It was all due to disobeying God. And that's the thing. You don't realize the effects until after the fact sometimes. Sometimes something you disobey God and you realize right away. Sometimes it's like accumulative. It's over time, it then hits you. Six months later, you realize like, oh crap. Because I was neglecting myself six months ago, now I'm paying the price. That was the case with me. Dude, if I stopped smoking, Six months ago, first of all, I'd probably be a millionaire today. Because back in December, I made a bunch and I didn't sell in crypto and then it came all the way down. And then now the other coin that I was gonna put that in, it just did like a seven X. So I would have had like a lot of money. I would have been in much better shape. I wouldn't have wasted money on those medical bills. I just wanna make it very, very crystal clear for anyone out there who's not on seam retention or is on like 20 days and hasn't seen results or whatever, stay on the journey. You could possibly have the biggest revelation you ever had in your life on 100 days or 150 days, or it doesn't have to be some exact number. It could be 157 days or whatever, but stay on this journey because you could relapse thinking nothing of it. And then a week later, because you're so weak, because you relapse, you're more uh, susceptible to injury. You could tear your ACL. You could break your leg or whatever. And you didn't even realize it was all because you relapsed because you got weaker. And then, you know, so for me, it's like the weed has also been a problem. Like, dude, I can't even imagine where I'd be had I never smoked weed, dude. It would honestly, I maybe wouldn't even want to be that big like I, I'd probably be way richer way like it would be insane but I'm also one 
to believe that God is ultimately in control of everything. He, he knows everything. He's all knowing. Now, does that mean he makes me do so? Like some people are skeptical of God. They're like, okay, well, how could God know everything and, and be ultimately all powerful and control and know that he creates people that, that, that are going to hell? It's like, dude, God doesn't send them to hell. They send themselves to hell because he gives you the choice to follow him or disobey him. If you choose to follow him, you'll receive life. If you don't, you go to hell. And guess what? If you're fapping every day and and a slave to your sin and, and just doing all this destructive crap, chasing sex, all, you're already in hell. <laughs> you're already in hell. You have to choose to follow God. It is a choice. God doesn't want you to not follow him and go to hell or whatever. And just because he knows what will happen, that does not mean that's what he wants to happen. His desire is for everyone to be saved. But people's own pride and ego is what pre prevents it. They'll sit there, or maybe they won't know this facts, but in case you didn't know this facts, I'll relay them to you. They'll sit there and understand that the Bible, the New Testament, is has the most manuscripts out of any writing in the history of humanity. And they don't teach in the schools. <laughs> I wonder why, because Satan rules this world. But they don't teach that. But some people who are skeptical, they'll understand that and they'll discover those facts. And then they'll still be like, oh yeah, well, you know, whatever, God. Like, dude, it's their own pride and ego. That's all it is. Like me, I'm a, the most unbiased, objective person ever. I grew up Christian, but I never read the Bible ever. I, I prayed to God, but I never studied the Bible ever. I never really knew anything about it other than what the, the pastor said on Sunday and then me just praying to God myself. It was entirely due to me doing my own research, not what my parents told me or whatever, because I went far from God. And then after I actually did the research and I looked at Muslim versus Christian debates, atheist versus Christian debates, I looked at the facts, I looked at the archeological evidence, I discovered that fact, which is that the New Testament is the number one most manuscripts out of any writing in history. And it's the earliest from the event. So Plato, for example, which is taught in schools, Aristotle, Plato, all this stuff, they teach that in schools. But it's like a thousand years after. The earliest writings we have is like a thousand years after the events even happened. And there's way less writings. And they're teaching that in school. Like, bro, do common sense. Just think logically. The time is farther apart. There's less writings to corroborate it. And they're teaching that in schools. The New Testament, the Bible, Jesus Christ, God of everything, they have thousands of manuscripts, like 50 to 100 years after the life of Jesus. And they don't believe that. It's like, dude, you're just in denial. You have to put your pride and ego aside. There's no reason for you to just deny God when the evidence points towards him. If you put your ego down, if you put all your preconceived, like, oh, I've always been an atheist, blah, blah, blah. I'm a scientist, blah, blah, blah. Put that aside and just look at the facts. Like, dude, that fact I just gave you, like, you can't just argue that. The Bible, the New Testament of the Bible, has the most manuscripts out of any ancient writing in history. That is an objective fact. So it's just like, dude, Jesus is king. Jesus is God. And, and even if you're like, oh, but I don't, yeah, but the Bible, whatever. Dude, study the Bible and you understand it's 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 literally correlated with semer attention. God, Jesus taught semer attention. Now, did he use the words semen retention? No, but that's what fleeing from lust and sexual immorality is. You cannot be on um, semer attention without fleeing from sexual immorality and lust because that's the whole reason that you get off of semer attention is lust with a woman. 
on this journey, it's going to make it so much easier to follow God and believe in God because your own experience is going to be correlated with God. And then you're going to understand like, oh, snap. I was just, I wasn't even seeing right. I didn't have my third eye like opened. Like I didn't really understand what was going. I wasn't even aware of the addiction, the sex addiction I was in, was just obsessing over these women. Semen retention solves that. I just had a great workout, lower body. We're about to get in great shape. I'm gonna do like a transformation fitness video. I can't believe I, 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 I made it this far, dude. I was seriously gonna relapse last week. And then I think it's just so obvious to me the spiritual realm is real. Because remember, 100 days, one of the girls from my past popped up, sent me a message, like on 100 days. And then right now it's 149 days. Well, yesterday, it was 150 days. Um, today, it's 150 days. But yesterday, like right before 150 days, a girl from my past texted me, bro, you can't make this up, bro. You can't make this up. You can't make this up, bro. She literally said, well, we were texting like a, a, like a little bit, but it was like last night, she sent me, what are you doing? Let's go get dinner. Yeah, <laughs> like, bro, I haven't had any offers like that in like a year. I haven't, like, the last girl I was, like, dating was, like, a year ago. And then the whole past year, I cuddled with one girl in November, and that's what caused me to relapse. Because after her, I just started, like, fapping and getting on those sites again, and then I, it caused me to relapse. But other than that, I haven't had no interactions with women at all. A hundred days, that ex hits me up. And then right before 150 days, this girl hits me up. And guess what? It's a girl that I really liked hooking up with. Like, she's got my type. She's my type of body and whatever. But she's nothing like my type of wife. So I'm, I, I didn't, you know, and she's like 30 minutes away. She's like, oh, I'm over here downtown. I'm just like, bro, it's, it's 10 p.m. Like, like she said, let's go eat at 8 p.m. And then she didn't text back until 10.30. And I was just like, bro, like, I, I already ate. And I'm not going 30 minutes out there. Like, so I just didn't text back. And that, but my point is, that's a test. It's a, it's 150 days test. Like, dude, 100 days, you get to this, this um, milestone, you get a test. Like I said, new levels, new devils. Just now, 150 days, new levels, new devils. And I was having these, like, bro, all these t sexual temptations right before 150. I'm at 150. I have the realization that I just need to be sober. Weed was just so detrimental to me. I am sober officially today, and I feel so much better. Oh, my goodness. Like, I'm in there. The the thighs or muscles are actually getting activated. Everything's getting activated. You saw you saw me shoot. That's my first, first time really hooping in, in a while. What, what did I hit? Nine out of ten, something like that. So eventually I'm going to make a video like me hitting like 30 in a row or something. But yeah, stay strong. Get on semen retention if you're not. I'm going to do another um, update. I don't know what these people are doing staring at me. Um, it's probably because about semen retention or maybe because I'm in the car talking to myself. But you know, either way, um you gotta get on this journey, man. 150 days. I can't believe I almost failed and like I wasn't uploading consistently because I was just smoking. Like I would smoke and I would just uh, edge, smoke and edge for like a week or two straight. It was an awful thing. I can't believe I didn't relapse in that period though, but I'm, I'm going strong. It's time to get back in shape. I'm actually gonna get in the best shape I've ever been in my life. Cause all my twenties I've been smoking. Literally my whole 20s, I've been smoking. So it's been neglecting my health. It's been neglecting my memory. And it's been probably effing up my finances too. I probably would have been a multimillionaire had I never smoked right now. And in super, super model shape. But that just starts now. That's what I was saying earlier about God's has a purpose. And he knows the future he has planned for you. And it's like, you know, maybe this whole journey 
it, it was, it's gonna help other people. Maybe had I never smoked and got super rich and successful at 23 years old or whatever, I would have never been able to help the people that I could help now because I wouldn't have had the experience that I had. So I'm not one to live in regrets. Yes, I was absolutely abusing, addicted to weed for like seven years. I was hooking up with a woman for like however many years. I've been celibate for like a year now. Well, sex, two years. But I like did like other stuff with a girl last year and then I haven't done anything for like a year. So, and now I'm on Seamer Attention 150 days. It's, it's gonna be amazing, man. I'm about to go to this loan company. This dude told me, cause I remember I was making a crypto video and I was like, oh, I'm, I'm going to get this loan. It's one of the reasons I got angry cause the bank denied me a loan, but this other little corner store gave me a loan, $2,500. Now people were like, oh, never get a loan and invest it. D never do that. Well, it's one of those things where it's like, you know, don't, these are for professionals. Don't do this at home if you're not a professional or whatever. So with me, you know, I'm, I'm a professional. I know what I'm doing. So that 2,500 that I borrowed, guess what it is worth today? $16,500. <laughs> so I don't know the exact math. It's like a 6X, 7X, 8X, something like that. But that loan is like almost a scam worthy like interest rate. Like it's literally like, it's a $2,500 loan, but if I wait like 24 months or 30 months, whatever it is to pay it off, it'll end up costing 10,000. And every $200 I'm paying right now, it goes straight towards interest. It doesn't go towards principal. So what I learned is if you just pay it early, it goes straight towards principal. So, so I'm literally just gonna pay that 2,500 off and then I'm gonna just be like, thank you for the 16,000. <laughs> so that is a strategy. That's actually how I made so much last bull cycle, 850,000, is I just borrowed money. It's, it's called OPM, other people's money. If you don't have the capital to invest, just borrow somebody else's money, not an individual, I'll warn you, not an individual's money, but an institution's, uh, like a lending company, just a loan company, preferably with your bank, because they have the best interest rates. You borrow that money and then you just outperform the interest rate. A lot of these um, loans, like if you have, if you get it through the right people, it's only like 10, 20%, maybe even five, 10% interest rate. Dude, crypto's doing that by the day. If you get a $10,000 loan and it's 5%, that's really good. You get one like that from the bank. You put that in crypto, dude, you could be a millionaire next year. And then you pay that little, Oh, 5% interest, brush that off. I just did it with 190% interest. But what these suckers don't know, see, they thought they were fooling me, but little did they know, they're the ones that got got. Cause I'm finna go over there and just pay that loan right off. <laughs> you know. And then they're gonna be like, wait, no, you should wait 30. Like I went there the other day, she's like, I wouldn't pay it off early because you should at least waste a wait a little bit to pay your to increase your credit score, Dude, they just want, I guess that's how they profit. But guess what? Thank you for the 16,000. <laughs> I ain't paying no interest, nigga. I'm, I'm sending that, like, I'm paying that off right now. So, well, actually not all of it. I'm gonna do like, like a little bit today and then I'm gonna let my crypto appreciate more. I'm gonna take some out and then just pay that whole loan off and then be like, Thanks for the 20,000, because it'll probably be worth that next week. So, yeah, it's it's a good strategy, but like I said, don't try this at home if you don't know what you're doing. Because it's very, with high interest, it's very risky. Low interest, it's you almost have to be stupid to not outperform 5% per year in the crypto bull market. Like, come on. Don't let, like, risk adverse people tell you that you can't be risk tolerant. I'm super risk tolerant. I think scared money don't make no money. So you gotta put up money if you wanna make money. You gotta put up risk if you wanna make it big. Um, I don't wanna live a comfortable life. I wanna live an exceptional life. Um, and on 150 days of Seamer Attention, you can do just that. Oh my goodness, this is 40 minutes. <laughs> I didn't realize it had been that long. But 
yeah, a lot of important stuff said in this video. Stay tuned for more. Joller Coaster out. Let's go, baby. Christ is King. 150 days. We're continuing. Let's go.